Hi, I hope you're doing okay. I'm hanging in there. Um, I know it can be really challenging for people to access nature these days, depending where you are in the world. So I wanted to share a little bit of my nature with you. I mounted GoPros onto my bird feeders uh, to get some footage of the visitors to my yard. This is a Chicagoland bird appreciation video, and I hope it brings a smile to your face. Oh, hey, look, it's Blue Jay. I really like Blue Jays. We have them year round here in Chicago. Whoa, uh, an incoming black, red winged blackbird. Uh, Blue Jays have the reputation as being boisterous and uh, aggressive birds, but um, I think they just display a lot of leadership potential. And uh, I think she could really rise up the corporate ladder someday. Yeah, yeah, keep it up with that go get em spirit. Oh, uh, here's a European starling. You can recognize them by their bright yellow bills and their cute little pink legs. They were thought to have been um, largely introduced to the United States by the American Acclimatization Society, which was a group founded in 1871 uh, with the goal of bringing European species to the United States for fun. Uh, that one didn't age so well. Nope. Oh, who's this? Who is it going to be? Oh, oh, it's an American robin. Oh, they're pretty cute birds. We have them year-round here. You don't see them as often in the winter. They uh, stay up higher in the trees, but in the springtime, they start they start coming back down. Actually, I was um, I'm inspired. I'm inspired to sing a little song about the American robin. This is to the tune of "American Woman" by the Guess Who. Uh, otherwise covered by Lenny Kravitz, um, but here's my, here's my version. It's called American Robin. American Robin, it's time to feed. American Robin, here to eat my seed. Comes hanging around my yard, looking for peanuts and blocks of lard. I got nothing better to do than spend my time getting footage of you. Now, Robin, come back to me. American Robin, tweet, tweet, tweet. I kind of ran out of lyric ideas there. Oh, this is a fun one. This is a female um, brown-headed cowbird, and uh, she, she's got to get her energy because she's about to rip somebody off. Um, brown-headed cowbirds are known as brood parasites. Um, so after they uh, mate... And when she's ready to lay an egg, she's not going to make her own nest. She's going to find somebody else's nest and, and leave her baby in their, their nest and let some other species of bird raise her young. When her young hatches, it's actually going to kick out the other bird's eggs. And uh, then these other birds are going to be raising a baby that doesn't even look like them. And she's going to be long gone. Um, but I think she's pretty clever. So take that for what you will. Oh, we got a couple of um, house finches here. The one in the front and the one on the left are both, they appear to be house finches. The one on the right is a house sparrow. Um, I, have a, I have a hard time discerning house finches from purple finches, which are other finches that are red. They're not actually purple. Who said purple finches were purple? I don't know. My field guide says a purple finch looks like a sparrow dipped in raspberry juice. Well, who figured that out? And shoop, here she is. It's a female downy woodpecker, the smallest of North America's woodpeckers. She is itty bitty. She's only about 14 to 18 centimeters, five and a half to seven inches. She's just a little bird, um, but she's got a big attitude. Um, they're pretty, they're pretty uh, resilient little birds. I think I could watch these all day long. Uh, she can lay down a pretty sick beat. Here, let's just listen to her for a minute.
Red wing blackbirds, they are super cool birds, and they're also pretty territorial. We have red wing blackbirds on museum campus, and uh, for the uninitiated uh, who who aren't paying attention early spring, um, you might, if you, you come visit us, you might get dive bombed by the red wing blackbirds. They have a, a tendency to swoop down at, at your head. You got to be careful. Probably wouldn't hurt to uh, make a note of that in the new higher orientation. You know, heads up, if you work here on museum campus, you might, you might have a close encounter with a red-winged blackbird. We have a, a male house sparrow over here. Um, house sparrows don't get a lot of positive attention. They're kind of a scrappy, uh, scrappy little brown and gray bird, not terribly descript or flashy. And um, they like to spend a lot of time in dirty puddles and eating garbage, um, but they're, they're really well adapted and they're actually pretty clever birds. Uh, I was reading the Wikipedia article about their feeding behavior and uh, I thought it was kind of funny it said, um, they can perform complex tasks to obtain food, such as opening automatic doors to enter supermarkets. So I just like to imagine the research scientist who spent some time scoping out some of these shoplifting house sparrows to write up a scientific article about that behavior in particular. It seems oddly specific um, and a little incriminating, to be honest with you, but, but you know... House sparrows, I like them. Sometimes during long winters, they're the only bird songs I hear for a while, so I'm, I'm pretty grateful to have these little neighbors. And I give them all the food they want, which probably is the reason why they keep coming back. But he's, he's a cute little bird. Or a borb. Is he around a bird? Borb. Orb. Bird. Borb. All right. Oh, it's a male cardinal. Uh, I'll I'll never forget the first time I saw a cardinal. We don't have them out west where I grew up. So first one I saw, I was about 22. I was visiting my sister in Washington, D.C. on a trip to the National Zoo. And I looked up in a tree. Here was this beautiful male cardinal. And I didn't know it at the time, but he had pooped on me. And I went to an interview to get into grad school and uh, with bird poop on me. Anyway, they let me into grad school, so I guess it all worked out. It still has brains on it.